Hi all, I'm Dan Smegrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, June 3rd, 2021, and we have an awesome show for you today. I guide Planix Camera Kit versus Matterport Pro 2 3D, and we have an awesome subject matter expert to talk about that today, uh, Emily Ullman. Hey, Emily, good to see you. Hi, Dan, it's great to be here, hi. Uh, Hi, and thanks for being back on the show. Emily is the founder and CEO of Hopscotch Interactive, uh, uh, based in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, uh, em Emily, we have a ton to cover on uh, 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 scanning, processing, post-production, hosting, viewing, floor plans, pricing, backup, storage. I have a ton of questions for you. But before we jump into that, I, I thought maybe you could just give us a kind of an introduction of when you got, when Hopscotch Interactive purchased its first Matterport Pro camera and purchased your first iGUIDE Planix camera kit and uh, why, and then maybe bring us up to current on Hopscotch Interactive. Okay, great. So thanks so much for having me on the show, Dan. It's so good to be back and to be able to chat with you and hopefully to be able to share some of this, you know, experience and expertise with folks. I started Hopscotch Interactive in 2015 and I bought my first camera in November 2015, but it wasn't the first one that I had used. Um, I started using the Pro camera um, in the spring of 2015, while I was at a startup that was building uh, a, an app for home management. And so uh, that's how I got introduced to the Matterport camera. And I liked it so much that I actually used it um, to sell my mother-in-law's property back in 2015. And at that time, nobody was really using it, but I had just sort of fallen in love with the device. And so um, I, I helped this um, property marketing for a family member. And then the realtors just started calling me saying, do you do this? And so it was sort of a backwards way into becoming a Matterport service partner. I know it's a bit of an antiquated term now, but um, becoming a photographer with the Matterport camera began in 2015. Uh, awesome. Uh, maybe you could bring us current of when you bought your iGUIDE Planix camera kit. And, uh, and, and I think you actually have more than one Matterport. So if you could talk about that and even tell us about what you're shooting, what kind of clients and what kind of services. Absolutely. So I bought my Planix system, which is my first iGUIDE. So I didn't get their predecessor um, camera because I was sort of on the fence. I felt like I had already, you know, invested pretty heavily into the Pro 2. And, uh, but I saw the Planix system as a good way to uh, sort of augment the business that I already have. And there's a lot of people that I know that are, you know, that are using it. And I see the, I see the merits of the differences, which we'll get into. Uh, but I just got it this month. I got it in May, well, last month now in May. And so right, you know, pretty much like a couple weeks after it was released, I got the new system. And uh, yeah, so it's it's pretty fresh. And I let's see. So I have I have five Matterport Pro twos now, but these are probably my tenth or twelfth systems. I mean, I had um, I also had several several of the first generation, the Pro cameras, and eventually I just I sold those and upgraded the fleet. So um, I've operated in the Bay Area. I've also operated in Germany. So I had a camera um, operating in Germany. We have. Um, our business is based in the Northern California area, and I also have a Matterport photographer in the Portland area. And um, over the years, I've built up a network of, you know, trusted and vetted photographers, just like you have, and some who I met through you that I, um, you know, that I really um, rely on for whenever I need to send somebody, um, you know, business elsewhere. Um, then I can contact them. And, and it's been super, it's been great. It's actually built up like a nice community, I would say. Awesome. So you offer Matterport uh, Digital Twins. What other services are you offering? So I'm a real estate photographer. So I also do a lot of, uh, you know, residential and commercial still photography. Um, our, you know, our, pa our packages are often, and especially since COVID, our packages usually are including 
um, still photographs, a Matterport tour, a Zillow 3D home tour, those three are have been sort of our, our core package throughout this, and I can talk about why, but um, I use that as sort of my basic package for folks um, and really promote that. And then we also offer aerial and um, so aerial stills, aerial video, um, custom videos, we offer websites and we do consulting on virtual reality and augmented reality as well. So everything from, you know, like a basic QR code all the way up to um, augmented reality campaigns. Awesome. And this is for residential, commercial real estate and... Yeah, and for event spaces or for pretty much anybody who has a space that needs to be marketed. When we first started the business, we said, you know, promoting extraordinary spaces. And so that was really the idea was, do you have a space that you'd like to take someone to, be it virtually or, you know, eventually in person? Um, you know, I always wanted to give somebody the ability to place shift and to go to that place in a virtual way. So the, the still photography was more out of uh, demand than, you know, than anything else um, and the upselling of services, but I actually found another passion for that as well. Okay, awesome. So that's uh, Hopscotch Interactive, hopscotchinteractive.com. Um, I, I, I just, I have this desire to, to ask you all these questions about scanning and post-production and, but before I kind of jump in and, and ask, uh, about iGUIDE, Planex, Camera Kit versus Matterport Pro 3D camera at kind of an individual level. Maybe on a, a scale of one to 10, 10 is the, 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 the best number. What do you give a, an iGUIDE, Planex, Camera Kit? What do you give a, a Matterport Pro 2 3D camera? So I think that um, for me, looking at the categories is really, really important, right? So I wouldn't compare, I, you have to compare apples to apples, you know, because I can't say that overall one is a 10 and the other one's a five. I do think that there are some key differences where you can compare head to head. Um, so let's I start with scanning. Let, let's, let's, fair yeah. enough. Let's, let's jump in and. Uh, you know, uh, you, you've been out sh shooting and actually being on site using th three different so solutions. Uh, what did you find and, and what did you like and not like about each solution? Okay. All right. So here's the big difference that you have to clear up first of all. Now I consider myself to be somewhat of a scanning queen. Like I love scanning. I think scanning is great. I, I have sort of this spatial intelligence that I've been honing since I've been working in um, this, this space. And, uh, you know, I come from a background, my dad is an architect and a general contractor growing up and, and my grandfather, great grandfather. So this is like, it's pretty like in my DNA to have this spatial aptitude. Right. And, uh, you know, so from a scanning perspective, here's the big, the big difference is that, um, an, in a Matterport camera and the Matterport system, you're creating 3D. It's, it's, it is in its essence because of the infrared um, sensors and the way that it's capturing the data, you're capturing a 3D point cloud. Now, iGUIDE is not 3D, it is 2D. So the LiDAR time of flight sensor that you have in the iGUIDE system is 2D. So just right there, you can't compare 3D to 2D. You can compare some things, but you can't compare everything. But what you have to look at is things like time and efficiency and accuracy. Okay. So from what I can tell you in terms of the accuracy, I think that the, they're just based on the science of that technology with a, the time of flight sensor that is in the eye guide with the LIDAR, it is more accurate and it doesn't have errors that sort of you know, exponentially occur throughout the time that you're scanning. Whereas with the Matterport, you know, it, it tends to have a slightly different functionality of that, of that infrared scanner. So I don't want to nerd out too hard in the beginning, but it's just, it's a different, it's a different animal. Um, well, uh, uh, nerding out's okay. I, I think our audience is actually interested in the difference be, between the two. Uh, okay. We'll talk about the viewing experience a little bit later. Uh, you, you mentioned how long it, it uh, how long it takes to scan. Yes. Uh, can you give us a comparison of the, the two cameras? Yes. Okay, absolutely. So I posted a video just recently on YouTube, which you and perhaps some of the audience um, at the We Get Around Network um, forum have seen. 
and um, which prompted a lot of really great comments from people who had this question. They wanted to know how long does it take when you're out in the field? And that was like my burning question, right? And um, the big difference was that for a certain average home, it took me an hour and a half to scan the property with a Matterport system. And that same property took me about 22, 23 minutes with the eye guide. Um, and, and that was, uh, I want to say, a 2,000 square foot home that, that you had scanned. Uh, yeah, that was a 2,000 single story, 2,000 square foot home where I had to do one strange thing, which was there was connected to the building, um, the main uh, the main house, there was a sh like a shed or workshop where you had to go out into the back courtyard and then go in a separate entrance to get into the shed and the workshop area. And so um, it was unusual, but even that, you know, I learned a lot based on the way the different cameras are able to operate in the field and how they read and you can manipulate the location of the data to, to sort of help it overcome some obstacles. Well, there, there's two questions there that from, I have two questions based on what you described. First was uh, you, you shot the same space in 22 minutes with the iGUIDE Planix camera kit, an hour and a half with the Matterport Pro 2 3D camera. Yeah. Why was the iGUIDE Planix camera so much faster than the Matterport Pro 2 for, for you? It was so much faster because I do not need to scan in order, right? Like I don't, I did, but I didn't have to. One of the things is that you need less scans overall in order to capture the space. So I was able to, for example, start in the foyer or entrance, the entrance to the property and I was able to place one scan there. Now with the Matterport, I most likely would have needed to have placed two or three in that same location. So the density of scanning is, you just, you can see it when you're building it, that the coverage is there. And you can see that the floor plan is being generated in, in such a way that you feel confident moving on to the next space. Um, and if you, for example, don't have overlap. So that's one of the things you have to have with Matterport, right? Like we don't even have the ability yet to tap on a scan and say, I'm near this one, right? Like we can't, we can't actually tell it where we are if we're scanning a large space and we go from one room to the other side to keep going because the sun changed. So with the, with the eye guide system, um, I'm able to manually align. And then, so let me just explain that manual alignment is going to be able to help you get over this thing you have with Matterport, which is the camera doesn't recognize where it is because it's, it's reading all the prior point cloud data, all that prior data that it scanned and it's sort of looking at a, for a place to fit itself in. We assist the eye guide. We don't need to do it, but if we do, we can assist that data to reorient where it is in our sort of preview in our mini map right and that is huge dan because if you are let's say you want to close the front door and place a scan outside even it'll recognize the the structure and you can just place that scan outside even with the door closed so which is quite a challenge for, for matterport which really needs to be able to have an un, un interrupted environment uh so that it can connect the scans. Uh, about the entrance, uh, Emily, so I'm just thinking with Matterport, maybe that was a large entrance, you needed to go every five feet or so maybe to make sure that the scans would connect. So you're connecting, 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 yeah. as opposed right. to saying, oh, I, I really could just jump 10 feet in this tour from somebody who's viewing it. I don't need to do these baby steps, but in order to scan successfully, I really need to do every five, seven feet. And yeah. I think what I'm hearing with iGUIDE because of the LIDAR technology that really you could jump almost as far as you wanted to do the next scan without worrying whether it was going to connect or not, you can completely, yeah, you, sorry to cut you off, but you can scan in a non-linear manner with the yeah. icon. Yeah. <clears throat> so if, if in the event that, that you did scan uh, in, in the hallway 
with the door closed that you could have still scanned on the outside. Uh, and then uh, I want to say manually tell iGUIDE yeah. on your iPad where that scan actually connects to. Is that That's sound right. That's right. Now, visually, you're going to have uh, inconsistency, right? So there's always this sort of like in movies, there's somebody that comes in and sort of makes sure that everything is, you know, is perfect from one scene to the next. Rather than in our world where it's like in Matterport, you're like, oh God, did the door, did somebody shut the garage door while I had my back turned and now I scanned with the door closed and now I can't, I'll never be able to go through unless I reprocess and try scaling a business where you have to communicate to somebody out who may not know the system as well as you do how to place trim marks and reprocess. And then, it, you know, you lost an, a night because that had to happen in the morning when they reprocessed in the evening. So well, there's so many, there's so many pitfalls really to that, that, that I, I was immediately like, okay, like, so if I had to say, you know, put, put me down for a number, like for me, that, that specific feature is a 10, like that is a 10 without sort of any kind of, you know, um, need to compare like that that's not apples to oranges uh speed of capture speed, speed of, of capture, capture of eye guide is a 10 compared to matterport being i mean you, you know it, scale it was, of one to ten ten is uh, the best ten, speed of capture you can't compare i mean you, you i just compared it but speed of capture is probably i mean compared to what i would say is like maybe a blk right so like, so like a BLK, BLK 360, yeah. So say the BLK 360, like a camera also compatible with Matterport um, capture app, let's say that that's four minutes per scan. And then the Matterport is, let's say 30 seconds per scan. Well, let, let's stay on Matterport Pro 2. So we'll just, we'll, there are many options. Let's just focus on the iGUIDE Planix camera kit versus the Matterport Pro 2 3D camera. And I, I really want to stay right in this, the scanning and you've yeah, identified say, speed. I'm still trying to understand. So are, with iGUIDE, are you having to do trim like you do with Matterport to indicate windows, mirrors? No, you don't because you know that, uh, you know that there's a drafter that's going to then receive what you've just uploaded and be able like you don't trim anything you don't put any markings mirror markings into that in the workflow they the the eye guide is is immediately sent to a drafting team okay so a drafting team team meaning a real person on the real other person. end uh who's actually looking at the tour in order to create floor plans we'll get to floor plans in a moment yes. i still want to understand scanning was it simply 22 minutes versus an hour and a half be, because you didn't have to scan every five feet, every five to seven feet as you do with a Matterport? Yeah, it was. It was also the, the rotation of the camera. So think about Matterport uh, being, you know, HDR spinning around, um, you know, all these lenses and uh, a Z1 camera, which is the one that the Planet system is, uh, you know, designed for just has the two fisheye lenses on either side and it's a single capture. So it's a single capture of that. That happens first, triggers the, the picture. And at the same time, the LIDAR is also triggered. It takes a couple extra seconds for that to process and sort of align. But um, but yeah, no, it just, it's so much faster. I think it's parsing less less data because it's 2D, not 3D. So if we're, if we're talking about the rotation of the camera for the Matterport Pro 2 3D, if we're talking about the uh, the Ricoh Theta Z1, it's actually the, the device for, for capturing uh, the scan data for the, the eye guide. It, there's no rotation, it, it just, it snaps the shot and there's some amount of processing. But if you compare shot to shot, is the eye guide just that much faster? It's that much faster. It's like, it, you can't, it, it is so much faster. It is like, uh, it's just the speed. It's it's also perhaps accomplishing less. It's not a colored point cloud, you know. It's uh, it's capturing less data, um, and so it's it's just faster. You're not trying to do as much. You're just trying to get accurate floor plans. You you, you mentioned the um, the outer building. Uh, could you take us through that and how you used each camera and what the challenge was and how perhaps you solved the puzzle for each? Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so basically, and again, I, I had no training. I was just going in blind. And I think that it's important to note that uh, I did that intentionally. I wanted to stumble over what I felt would potentially be user interface or user experience issues because I'm a bit of a beta tester in that way. And I like to see, is this intuitive enough for me to give to somebody else? Because I don't necessarily see myself being the only operator. Most likely I will need to train other people or I, I'm gonna need to be able to tell people, here's what you're gonna encounter, right? Um, so what I did was I, I was in the, the bedroom, I went out, I opened the sliding glass door and I tried to go outside with the Matterport camera first, right? Um, and the, the Matterport camera, um, the back of the house was flooded with sunlight. I was, there was a sort of a trellis with some plants that filtered a bit of the sunlight, but I knew I was going to be in trouble because sunlight works like an eraser for infrared. It basically, um, it interferes with the infrared um, light. And so there's nothing for the light to really bounce back from. And so it's just, it can't, it can't figure out where it is. And even it can sometimes do okay if it's, um, if it can read a part of a structure, which I was like, fingers crossed, please read part of the structure. I'd love to get into this shed. I had, I was like hoping it would happen. But after three tries, I basically gave up with Matterport and think about it. Did, did you switch to, uh, doing 360 views and doing Matterport cortex and did, I did that solve the problem? I, you know what? I did not do that because I felt like that was um, that was, I was trying to stick to Matterport. Now, if you do Cortex in Matterport within their platform, you can't order native floor plans for Matterport. If you've used even one scan that has been, um, basically measured via photogrammetry, which is that Cortex where they sort of map the 360 image to the, the rest of the imagery that, um, felt to me like. I knew I would have, and I knew I could, and I could use a third party to generate the floor plans, but that's not really an, enabling me to give a fair comparison to Matterport on the accuracy of their floor plans. Um, and that is also, it, it's also highlighting a shortcoming of the Matterport system. Um, you know, Did you need a floor plan of, of the shed as well? Yeah, I wanted to have, I wanted to because it was part of the house. So really your own, only workaround is if you used Cortex to get to the other uh, Matterport Cortex to get to the other building would have been to duplicate the model, create one for the house, one for the shed and de delete the Cortex converted scans in order to be able to submit it to Matterport. I could have done that. I that, probably could have done that, but I still felt like, you know, that, right. That that's what, that's a good idea, Dan. And I didn't think about doing it that way, but I was sort of, I was thinking about, um, the ability to navigate from the bedroom to the shed. And, um, I think that if I had three fails in a row, I already know I've spent 10 minutes of time trying to get it to work. And I was, I just gave up. I was like, okay, like we're going to move on. You know, I don't have, so did, did you truly give up with Matterport and you never made it to the shed? I made it to the shed. Um, I, sh I scanned the shed as a separate model. Yeah. I scanned the shed as a separate model. And then, um, that, and, and, and w was this a, a real client that you were shooting for? And they, yeah. uh, so were there expectations that they were going to get one model and now they got two? No, they, they didn't have that at all. I mean, they don't care. It, it, they didn't care if they had one models yeah. or two. And also I did end up ordering third party floor plans and the third party floor plans, w they took care we, of it. We, let, 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 let's talk about floor, floor plans later. We'll, we'll have yeah. a whole discussion on that. So uh, was there anything else in terms of Matterport getting to the shed or ready to talk about iGUIDE and, and getting to we the shed? We can talk about iGUIDE. No, that's, that's it. That's it. It basically, it, it, it was a, it was a fail. It didn't work. And iGUIDE? And iGUIDE. So iGUIDE, um, you know, there's a lot of foliage. I've had the same door open. Conditions are exactly the same. Um, I take the iGUIDE out and the iGUIDE um, is reading, you know, reading everything. The first scan was totally fine. It knew exactly where it was. And the second scan um, was really right in the middle of the sun, right? So there was sunlight everywhere. So iGUIDE isn't, per like the iGUIDE LiDAR system isn't perfect in the sun, 
it still took a measurement. It still gave me data instead of Matterport just fails. And then you have nothing you have, like, you've just lost a, a minute or whatever of from trying to do the second setup. And so, but with the eye guide, it, it actually took the scan, but it didn't know where it was. It thought it was somewhere else in the property. And um, which is, a, which would be a common error, right? It tries to locate the, the nearest scan, but it doesn't find it. And this was the brilliance of using the LIDAR system was that then I went into manually, you know, I went into manually align and then I was able to rotate it, put it in the right place, hit snap, and then it snapped into place and then I was able to keep going. And then, so that was like one scan outside the door, one that would have absolutely failed, but I was able to fix it. And then the next one was fine. And then I was already at the shed. So, so was that, was that, uh, you, you mentioned specifically, you didn't really want to kind of read ahead or study. Uh, you just wanted to go out and experience it so that you could just, well, what's the user experience like? Uh, how was the user experience for somebody that was a newbie to, to the iGUIDE Planix camera kit? Was that hard to figure out of, uh, oh, I just tap here and I can move the scan here, hit snap and boom, I'm done. Did it was um, as easy, easy as that? I mean, it was as easy as that. And I would say, um, you know, as long as somebody is not nervous to press a bunch of buttons to figure out <laughs> what stuff is going to be, you know, what's going to be uh, the use of that uh, particular button, you know, as long as you're a little bit of a, um, you know, I guess a, an adventurer that way, uh, you can, you can figure it out. Yeah. But anything else on scanning that was just dramatically different be between the two experiences? Mm, I would say that um, the the view is different. So like, um, I really liked having a split screen uh, view. So one thing that it, on the eye guide, you're, you're talking about on your tablet looking at eye guide. Yeah, so you have multiple options of how you look at that scan. So you can look at the scan um, where it is. Uh, you can just look at the map on iGUIDE. You know, you just look at the map, or you can look at just the pano, or you can look at is sort of this two screens. And I use a tablet, right? Like I use my iPad. Um, and you have a split screen. So you have on the bottom half, you have your mini map. I don't know what iGUIDE calls it. Hopefully it's the map. So you have the map, and then on the top you have the the um, the, the uh, connected panorama, right? The panorama that was taken in the same location, which is super helpful, right? In Matterport, we can tap on a scan and we can see its location, but we're tapping on a flattened uh, 2D image of a 3D model in order to then bring that up, right? Um, and so you're not really looking at it in terms of interface simultaneously. And I don't know if that makes any sense if you're, you know, but that is really, um, that was a critical difference in terms of being an operator of the system in the field. Okay. Um, uh, a, a setup. Um, I, I believe that you actually already owned a Rico Theta Z1 when you bought the iGUIDE Planix camera kit core version, which is the same identical kit without the Rico, was it hard for you to figure out how to put your, the Rico Theta Z1 into the? Well, I was expecting it would be hard because there, I sort of, you know, based on the website, I was like, okay, well, there's a calibration, right? And calibration's a, a 50 cent word, right? Like that's one of those where you're like, calibration, oh man, I'm like, you know, I don't want to get that wrong. Um, so I, uh, I got the eye guide and I don't know if I have the, the card here. Maybe I have the card. I can show you, Nan. Um, in the kit, um, it came with a couple of instructions. This installation card. Can you see that? Yes. All right. This is what I got. And then I had this thing. This was like also helpful. It's just like a two page quick start reference guide. Now I was suspicious when I first got these because this was like, okay, there's just two cards. That's not a lot of info. I'm a pretty visual person. This is not super visual, right? Um, so I had to do a little reading. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, 
the installation was easy. I I had I have many not many. I have let's say I have five Z ones. I think I have five Z ones. So I so I took a Z one as a as a victim potential victim here, and I plugged it into the eye guide system. The only thing that I had to buy. Um, I have these here just to show you. So the only thing that was another little piece that, that I did purchase was this cap uh -huh. that I didn't own before. I, I have different cases, but I, I had to unscrew this top here, which I showed you is on that uh, little card. And there's uh, six installation instructions. And the calibration... Um, it just took a few minutes. Like it didn't take that long. I pointed the eye guide at a corner. And the nice thing about a corner is that it's a very straight, very visible line. And so you point your system at a corner and it can only go in one way. I mean, it's like, you know, it's definitely made to be a little bit foolproof here. And uh, so you point it at a corner, it, t it does one shot, it calibrates. And then I was using it right away. I mean, so, I so it was easy to put the Z1 into the Planix kit, and yeah. then it was easy to do the calibration. And once you've done that, are you you're done with those two steps? You're done with those two steps. I would so there's the thing is is this is um, maybe this infographic here with their little uh, instructions. Uh, can you see that you need to lift up? There's four screws, and then there's a few other elements that are inside the system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I felt like this piece could have come off a little more easily or could have like, I could have just had a, a clip that I unclip or, and, or screw and then unclip. And cause you don't, it, it doesn't come up like really easily. You have to definitely like use a little elbow grease to get it off. So that part was like, all right, well, I don't typically disassemble electronics. That's just like, not a thing I usually do, but I felt like, all right, that's why I bought it. And, um, you know, I'm going to give it a whirl. So yeah, once I plugged it in, um, that was it. I mean, I don't even, I don't think you have to do anything. Just don't over tighten it according to this. So okay. I, I, I guess I did it right. All right. I, I think this is kind of related to scanning. Uh, how about in terms of storage? So can you can you take us through that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, for anybody who is coming to this and is a Matterport uh, professional or has been using Matterport in the field um, or is even new to Matterport, one of the things that you should know is the data is not stored on the device. It's not stored on the Pro 2 camera. The data is stored and is limited by the capacity of your iPad, right? Who's that so, good looking guy in the reflection there? Who's that guy? Yeah. <laughs> so um, in case you didn't know that, having a large capacity iPad with high processor speed, that would be the most recent iPad of whatever model it is, is a big investment, but a good investment for you. Um, and I already had that iPad. So um, I, you know, I didn't know in the beginning, do I need to have an external, like, what's my storage system? Is it the Theta? Cause the Theta, and this is the first version of the Z1. Um, they have a new one that came out this year. That's a little bit higher capacity, but that is of no interest to us with the Planix system because, um, neither the battery matters really, nor the storage because everything is stored on an external um, oh, I guess it's in my computer right now, but everything is stored on an external flash drive. Um, and then that flash drive plugs in via USB to the system. And um, then that is just taken out and plugged into your computer. So you're um, talking about a thumb, a thumb drive. A thumb drive. So a thumb drive, and this camera comes with a 16 gig uh, thumb drive and uh, you, you can upgrade it. So if you really wanted to have uh, one, um, I'm thinking one terabyte. I don't know what it, what's most the thumb drive comes in today. I don't know. I have like a 256 gigabyte uh, thumb drive that that you know might be a good one or like a you know yeah terabyte thumb drive maybe. Um, but that would be overkill. You don't need it because you probably would you know you wouldn't want to have all that data most likely on the on the stick. But you could. Okay. So the the good news is the data is not. For, for the iGuide Planix camera kit, the data is stored on a thumb drive. 
Yeah. It's not on your iPad or smartphone, which you could use. Yeah. It's not stored on the Rico Theta Z1. It's totally on the thumb drive. It's totally so, on the thumb drive. And let me tell you also the the kind of like the relief um, of this of this in terms of your workflow as an as an operator. Now, everyone is familiar with folders and sort of you know hierarchy of storage in you know in their computer or or other you know Google Drive or Dropbox or your own whatever storage you use, right? Um, and the thing is, is that Matterport's system of storing files is pretty buried um, in the in the iPad, right? In the capture app. And also those files are not ones that you name, right? Matterport spits out a like 27 digit code, um, maybe has the right date associated with that. And then you're looking for a needle in the haystack if you want to try to get that file to either back it up or to share it. Now, there, this is this is a big, big difference, and I hope people understand this. But the ability to easily locate and to easily transfer that data, whether to your own backup storage or to a client, um, it, it can't be understated. It is a it is a big relief. So in the case of Matterport, there really isn't a way to easily restore. It's it, uh, Matterport will tell you, go use this program or this program. I, I'm even reluctant to say it be, because- I wouldn't I, say I, it either. I, 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 wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't wish that process on anyone. It should just- No, totally. I'm, I'm already uploading to the, cloud, the Matterport cloud it should just be as easy as pressing a button to restore. But that's this a topic a hot, for- hot, This is a hot topic for me because I have had, um, I have had, you know, how many hundreds of uh, models over the years? Back in the day, we used to have to even like sort of delete them when we, you know, we didn't want to run out of capacity. We ran out of capacity. And it was sort of prior to me really digging into the weeds to understand how I could even potentially back up, offload, back up, restore. In the beginning, Dan, I was just buying new iPads because I was like, I don't want to lose this data. Or I would say, okay, there's a chance I'll never need this again. But we even talked about this years ago saying, never delete your data, right? You know, you don't know what it's going to be worth someday. So, um, you know, we had, we've had that conversation now going on for years. So um, it's, it sounds like for, for iGUIDE Planix ca camera kit, it's a no brainer because it's just on a thumb drive. Uh, it's not on a proprietary thumb drive, it's any thumb drive, and you can use as, as many as you want, and then you can store the data uh, in the cloud, on your computer, however you store it. Correct. Yeah, that's true. And if you have the Matterport um, support, like if you contact Matterport and say, hey, I need help backing this up, the, you know, I need a backup system, you would think that now in, you know, 2021, so many years after the launch of the first system, after thousands of operators have had this frustration, that there would be some solution for this. And that literally this problem came up for me last year, because I was like, No, maybe, maybe I can outsmart it, maybe I can pull the three, the, the pano data, because I wanted to take a 360 from one highlight reel from a a building that was now under construction to a, another one. I, I always create a, a master of a building when I start it, especially for commercial spaces, scanning all the amenities. Anyway, my back, my restore didn't pull one of those or two or three of the panos that I really needed. So the rest the restore process didn't actually work properly. Um, and you don't know it until you try to restore it. Um, after which point it's going to be too late if it didn't restore properly. So anyway, long story short, Matterport, Zendesk, you know, whoever is running their support, bless their heart, they tried. We, you know, we tried the best we could, but there was there was no solution for that. And it's because it is just so wrapped up with the location data, even if the location data has been technically suppressed in order for you to get that 360. Now with iGUIDE, that's not an issue. And again, moving between backing up, I just feel a greater sense of assurance that I'm not going to lose something that would be critical to a client maybe a year down the road. So on a scale of one to 10, backup and restore. Oh, backup. 
Yeah, back up from Restore Eye Guide. It, I haven't done enough that I would say that maybe like the, I've read about people saying files can get corrupted. So I don't know yet um, what all the pitfalls could be. But so far, I would say that 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 also is a place where I see Eye Guide being uh, definitely a, a clear winner. And it's a number. Uh, let's say I heard there's corrupt files. So I'm going to say right now, like a nine, like I'm going to give it a high score. And um, Matterport I, for, it, for uh, data storage and, uh, and backup. Oh, like a two. Yeah. You're They're very, you're, you're very generous. This topic would make my, my brain hurt. So anyone that wants to continue this topic and the we get around network forum, W, <coughs> excuse me. WGANforum.com, uh, go see that either search on backup or restore or go look for the tags backup or uh, restore. Uh, before we move on from scanning, um, uh, is, was there anything else in terms of outdoor scanning to talk about uh, with iGUIDE? Did it enable yeah. you to do something else? Okay, this was where iGUIDE, this is where we kind of had maybe the tables turn a little bit for Matterport versus iGUIDE. So, and, and this is one of the things that as a, as I, you know, navigated this for the first time by myself and I really didn't know how to do it. I kind of referred to it as just sort of, I was a less hacking it, but I, I, what I had done was I didn't know, for example, in a commercial space, say I have a fitness center, I have a cafe, I have non-contiguous spaces or amenities, a parking garage, the fountain across the street, and I want to capture those amenities in a way that is going to be representative of like how cool this space is, right? And uh, Matterport does a really great job of those 360s just being like, boom, boom, boom. I can have the 360s um, of any location. You're talking about 360 TV. views 360 versus views. 3D scans. Correct. View. Okay. Yeah, and I can have those sort of be in my 360s folder and they're just 360s. There's no mingling of 3D data with the 360s. They're totally separate. I mean, we found out we found out the hard way that that's not actually true on the back end, but in terms of your interface and how you access them and you work with them for your, you know, for creating the tours, um, yeah, it's separate. And um, iGUIDE was not as elegant. Um, iGUIDE, I had, uh, the only way I could think about fixing that in order to create 360 views or amenities um, was to make a um, a new floor. And I found I found out later that you know well I did it right. That's the right way to do it is to create a new floor. But I found that to be counterintuitive. I found that to be sort of like a best guess option rather than something that was um, intuitive or part of the 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 interface. Uh, or like a graphical interface that would say, hey, you want to make a 360, do it here. None of that. Um, I had to relabel and rename things uh, uh, manually. And I just sort of crossed my fingers and thought, okay, well, hope the drafters know to ignore this. Got it. So be before I move on from this topic of scanning, was there anything else that you wanted to add? No, I think that's good. That's great. Oh, I, you said setup, and the setup is basically the same. Um, maybe you have to, uh, you know, you can use your same iPad. I'm just using the same iPad and uh, operating everything on my iPad. So I like that I could go back and forth between the two. I shot another house uh, yesterday, no, the day before yesterday with iGUIDE and Matterport. And again, just same iPads. So I only have to bring one thing. Um, that part was pretty fast and easy. What about, I, maybe it's not fair to ask you about the uh, battery length because you haven't really done that much, but do, do you ever have where you're on site for 12 hours? Mm, I've never run out of battery. Never, on okay. Any of my but I know that the iGUIDE Planix camera kit uh, has, you could buy extra batteries and you could pop it in and out. Is, is, is that helpful to you, not helpful? Doesn't matter. In I can't imagine a scenario. The Bay Area where I live is pretty spread out. Like unless you're doing some sort of multifamily operation where you're you're doing like, you know, fifteen of these in a day, which you know I could imagine people do that. Um, unless you're doing that, I don't see it really running out of battery or space. And 
Um, I run out of battery on the iPad a lot faster than I run out of battery on either of these devices. And, and especially on the iGuide, it was a relief that I was not going to have to rely on the Z1 battery, which is notoriously um, limited. Like so the minutes. so the, the the specs of the Ricoh Theta Z1 gets charged by the iGuide Planix camera kit. So I, I think you what you probably best practice go fully charge your Ricoh Theta Z1, but know that it it's it's getting recharged off of the iGuide, which should last about six hours in continuous use. Yes, in fact, on on the other day when I went out to the field and I had checked all my gear before I went out, I must have not powered down the z1 because when i got to the property um my z1 had been like at 97 and it was at 27 and um but i turned on the eye guide planet system and then i could see that the that the z1 was starting to charge again from the planet system as its base and i was like sweet that was awesome okay cool so i'm gonna ask you a scanning question later on, but there's so much more that I, I did want to cover. Sure. Um, processing, uh, processing. Um, okay, so you, how, how do you get your tour for iGUIDE? How long does that take? And then yeah. how long does it also take to get floor plans? So um, processing for iGUIDE, this is one of those areas where I think iGUIDE being um, you know, maybe a bit more utilitarian and maybe not as, um, not as much investment has gone into its interface, um, for the users. Um, you know, there's, there's some questions that I have about that and maybe even, you know, the answers, Dan, but, um, basically, you know, you take the, this, uh, data off of your device, you put it into your computer. You have to open up something called Stitch, and Stitch is an a, you know an app that you have to install on your computer um, when you create the iGuide um, account. And so you go into Stitch, and in Stitch you have a bunch of different you know tools at the top of your toolbar um, where you are editing potentially the the white balance, the color balance, the, you know, all of these different, you know, the gamma, you can, you can actually get quite granular into the, the actual image quality. Um, and you can also move scans around. You can make sure that they're in the right place. Um, at that point, you sort of, you, I guess you export everything. Um, and when you export it, you're exporting it back to its location. Uh, where you pulled the uh, you know the original files from and then you have to go into something else now that's the part where i feel like this could be better suited to a newbie um, because you have to remember stitch and then you have to remember my see i'm even having trouble remembering it now. i was just i was just assuming you you press a button and it uploads to a cloud no you, you have to go and it's not on is it on this card you have to go to manage, I think it's like manage.iguide, is it here? Yeah, manage.youriguide, the last little line here says, go to manage.iguide.com. But everything else is go iguide. Well, you know, everything else is go iguide and then stitch. So, I mean, this is definitely some feedback for the team at iguide from a marketing perspective. Like, I'm trying to just get this thing done. Like, you know what I mean? So, uh, so, so I hear the challenge. I think what I'll do is I'll reach out to the iGuide team, see if we can get them to do a, maybe a master class on WGA and TV Live at Five on stitching and uploading and post-production. But that said, I, I hear you. You really just, I, I think in the case of, it's, it sounded like you were really happy out of the camera. You just want to press a button, have it upload, process, and be done with it. Yes, and I think that one of the reasons that you can't is because of the ability to manipulate the data. Is how so, important is being able to 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 do the white balance, to change the, the 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 color, to edit the camera out of a bathroom mirror? How important is all that to you? That stuff is fairly important to me because of the 
Um, the Z1 as a camera is an inferior camera um, to the Pro 2 in terms of just the image quality. It's the best of all of the 360 sort of all-in-ones um, at that price point. Um, but it has this one flaw, which for real estate marketing is tricky. And the, the flaw is that it tends to, when you have a difference of cool light and warm light coming from different directions, maybe one from one lens and one the other, Dan, then it, it basically, um, it can get this like orange cast or this really like difficult, like this color that is just pretty jarring and is, is not what you want. So you need to be able to go in and reduce the yellows, reduce the oranges and the warmth and kind of just make that image look a little bit more appealing. So it's a known issue with the Z1. And, uh, and so I like to be able to go in to adjust it. I have no ability within Matterport, not within third party uh, solutions, but within Matterport to make color corrections yet. And so um, I think that that is definitely cool and I love being able to do it, but it was like, I, have you used PT GUI? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. PT GUI pro. Yes. But I, you know, I would say Emily, for me, that was a, a previous life before Matterport and, and I was happy to move away from yeah. all that, all that post-production, let's see, PT exactly. GUI pro and Pano 2 VR were my two go-tos for, do, for doing 360s, which lets you actually edit three edit 360s and do a lot of a, a lot of things with it but that the appeal to Matterport was I didn't have to do any of that I now, knew that I, I know that and I know you had a big career doing a lot of 360s as well like that was that was sort of you know one of the things that you were passionate about and I think that being able to not have to do PT GUI because I that is a huge headache for me and I don't like using it and, and my system always felt like it was lagging and it was just like oh I don't want to do this and um, so I have to sadly say that going into the iGUIDE Stitch software felt a little PT GUI esque for me. Um, uh, okay. Does that make sense? It, it, it may be a solution for you because you're you're a busy, successful professional real estate photographer with, with lots of, of of pros that work with you. Uh, is outsourcing it, and uh, ha happy to have that conversation offline with you about just sending your 360s off to another company to do whatever you want. Absolutely. Import. I'd be really happy to have somebody or even for one of my team, like I have a media editor on staff and if my media editor wants to, you know, invest the time in this, but we have our hands full with, with a lot. And this is just adding one more thing for them to have to navigate. Okay. So that, so that's a concern. And so I, <laughs> I think this actually applies to scanning was, is the image quality. So, uh, I, I think the two big things I've heard so far, uh, and, and they're and they're polar opposite. So I, you got all excited talking about how quickly you could use iGUIDE, but you've also sir, said that the camera quality, the image quality of a Matterport Pro 2 is far better than the, the Ricoh Theta Z1. Yes. So uh, talk to me as a business person, what, what, what's that do for you as a, a quandary? I, it's not a quandary for me necessarily because I'm happy to offer both. I'm trying to find the sweet spot of who, which clients of mine are going to be best served by which device, right? And uh, not, I don't want to have like a menu where, you know, you can order all these hundred different things and then we have to know how to make every different thing for somebody. Um, but like, for example, this morning, um, a client, the client that I had just done the demo for with the iGUIDE and the Matterport, they said that it was clunky. They didn't like the um, sort of pano to pano movement. I think that they really did like the Matterport. They, they said they, they want to stick with Matterport. And so far I've had clients um, say that they want to stick with Matterport. Um, well, if you shot with iGUIDE, would you be charging less because you're only on site for 22 minutes versus uh, an hour and a half? I'm not sure yet. We haven't done our rate card for iGUIDE um, yet. And so it's sort of like a coming soon. So I'm still thinking about that. What I shoot, what I spend, I think I would charge the same. That's my initial. Okay. And would your clients, initial. would your, would your either new, I don't know about existing clients. If you, so if you switched for an existing client and they went, hmm, you're only here for 22 minutes versus an hour and a half. Shouldn't you charge me a, a third of what you charge me for uh, your Matterport? 
is 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 that a concern? That that question is from a member that we get around that work forum. Who says, hey, hey, you you show up with the, something that doesn't look as big as impressive, and it took you a third of the time. Can you still charge full price? I think you can because you have to consider the upfront costs of processing. Um, a Matterport is a fixed price for processing, uh, and so. It doesn't matter if you scan 100,000 square feet versus scanning, uh, you know, 1,000 square feet. Whereas for the eye guide, you're actually being charged by the square foot um, above a certain size. And so um, I think that you have to be able to think about it in terms of, yeah, it was faster, but it was more accurate. And it also, um, you know, the, the processing cost me more. So it's just sort of like, where is that, where is that um, inflection point where I feel but, like it's, it's profitable and fast? Well, can you charge the same when the image quality is less with See, an eye guard? These are great questions. These are great questions, Dan. That's why I'm still, I'm still in this, this um, I'm still in this mode where I'm, I'm aggressively testing this with clients to see you know, what do they say? Because they're, what, no matter what I think, what matters is what my clients think. Well, I'm, I'm a little bit ahead of myself asking even these pricing questions and what, what you might charge. I, I think it's probably still helpful to, to, to still understand iGUIDE, Planix, Camera Kit versus Matterport with some other categories. So um, uh, floor plans, for example. Yeah. So floor plans, uh, what I can tell you about the floor plans is that um, I am with the eye guide system, for example, measuring the wall thickness, right? So um, I'm measuring the wall thickness, um, which, you know, is able to give me a more accurate reading um, in terms of the sort of the, the LIDAR and the computation of the square footage or the square meters. And uh, so having that, that measurement of the wall thickness is actually something that is, you can omit that, you can avoid that, but, or not include it. But uh, if you do include it, then your measurements will be even that much more precise. Now, one of my sort of mistakes the first time I was out in the field was that I didn't scan close enough together. Well, this may be getting way granular, but, um, it's not just the floor plans, but it's the, uh, the advanced measurements or the measurements. So if you wanna make, for example, a vertical measurement in the eye guide, um, they require that, you know, you're sort of, you're, I think you're triangulating, but you're basically taking a measurement, um, that same measurement from two different panos, right? So say you wanna measure the length of the, the, the column in a dining room, like say there's a column in a dining room, and so you want to measure at the base. Well, you have to pick uh, a pano that's close to it, and then you have to pick another pano and measure that same spot to get your tolerance and to see how accurate the measurement is and to see if you can really get within like a two inch tolerance or maybe a half inch tolerance. Uh, I think this may be helpful, Emily. So there's actually three different iGUIDE Planix camera kits. There's the 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 unit that we think we're all talking about, which comes with the Ricoh Theta Z1 plus the housing for it, the, that's the iGUIDE Planix camera kit. You can buy it without the Ricoh Theta Z1 and supply your own Ricoh Theta Z1 as you did. There's yeah. actually a third category, which is to pay about $500 more and have iGUIDE calibrate, not you calibrate, iGUIDE calibrate the lenses of the Ricoh Theta Z1 to the iGUIDE Planix base unit. In That's order what to, I did manually. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Uh, you, you pay them $500 more yeah, in, yeah. in order to be able to drop points to measure not going across a wall up and down, but to be able to do what you're talking about is going doing three-dimensional measurements or measuring within a 3D space. I see. Is that, is that so, but in the, so there's three different measure modes, right? There's measure mode one, two, and three in the system. So you're saying that measure mode two would then be different for a person who had had the system calibrated by iGUIDE? Yes, actually, yes. That's okay. my understanding. And I, and I would 
I would say pr probably it's, it's not going to matter in most use cases. The only people that really need to get that $500 calibration is someone who is, you're, you're working for one of your architects and they really need to have the precision on an as built because they're, they're about to go put some kind of cabinetry in a space and yeah. they need the precision. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm sure standard practice, all trades are gonna come out and do their own measurements. So e even if you're a cabinet maker, you're not gonna rely on eye guide as measurements or if on the architect, you're gonna come out and do your own measurements. Yeah. But that said, uh, an architect is, is likely someone who would care about the precision. So a homeowner who's thinking about putting a sofa there, it's gonna be precise enough for them. To Absolutely. Say, oh, my sofa I think that it. That's a huge, huge, huge difference for, your, um, for identifying who your clients are gonna be. So if a client is telling me that it's not accurate enough or that the um, measurement tool is too time consuming, I'm just curious, curious what would be the time savings if you had a system that was calibrated. And I don't know that that is something that I've read in terms of their marketing materials where that's like a, a, a measured amount like, hey, you can have your if we if we use send a eye guide report to your client at the same time you get it, they'll be able to go in and if your eye guide has been calibrated, it's going to save you and your client the the time it takes to measure two locations. To it, it, the, the, the key here really is probably who is the client and if it's an yeah. architect, they're going to care. If it's a real estate agent, totally, they're not going to care. And right. for, most, for most of the We Get Around Network community, I was mostly probably doing a lot of residential, a yeah. lot of commercial. The base unit of the iGUIDE uh, is not going to be worth spending an additional $500 yeah. to get it professionally calibrated. Now, if you, you since you already have a, a Ricoh Theta Z1 and you have the base unit of the iGUIDE Planix camera kit, if you decide you want to spend the $500, you can send it away to them. You'll be without right. your camera, obviously, but right. they'll still do the calibration after the fact. So think of that as an upgrade or actually what I'm doing right now is talking to our, our viewers to say, uh, you know, if you have to ask questions about the calibration, you're probably not a, a candidate for the calibration. Uh -huh. Save the money, buy it. But later down the road, you find that you're working with an architect who pulls out a laser measure and, and says, hey, you're off by a half inch. Then to say, ah, okay, I can go send my camera off back to iGUIDE, let them calibrate it. So for this client, perhaps I can charge a premium because they actually care about that. I think that's a really good point, Dan. And I think that um, making sure that uh, your audience knows that the calibration is, um, is going to be also resulting in a different experience of doing advanced measurements and a different and a potential time saving there is is a huge is a huge difference. So um, I mean, certainly for a residential, you wouldn't need it. But um, you know, I've already seen that the that there's there is interest from the AEC community to use it, and especially because the AEC the, they architects. Only need like, Excuse me, uh, you mentioned AEC. So for our audience, architects, engineering, construction. Yeah, AEC, architects, engineering, and construction. Those people may also be the most served by a lower um, lower fidelity, so therefore slightly less uh, high quality image on the tour, and so they would be more interested in the data itself. And I think so that's, that's an interesting important. matrix because they might care really about the measurements, not so much about the photography. So, I, yeah. uh, so all of us, you know, perhaps me included, are thinking about. Oh, the, the imagery is really important. No, I, I just care about the measurements because I need an as built and frankly, everything in this space is going to go away anyway, but give me precise measurements yeah. for my for my as built. So I'm, I'm still trying to probe for floor plans. Uh, did, did you yeah. send off your Matterport? Your, you, you did a tour, same location with iGUIDE, with Matterport. Did you request 
floor plans from Matterport, floor plans from iGUIDE, and then looked yes. at the two. And so what was your conclusion? Um, my conclusion was, and I didn't, um, or I don't recall, I didn't look at the square footage. I could pull that up, but that might be awkward with the No, zoom, no, no, no. I'm not yeah. looking for the for the measurements. I, uh, you know, it, and again, for most of our audience, probably the measurements are going to be good enough for either floor plan. Uh, I'm just wondering about how they looked. I, I they looked great. Both looked great. I or I ordered the Matterport, uh, you know, the native Matterport floor plans from within the workshop, and they came back um, the next day. And I guide came back like roughly the same time. I think I spent a little bit more time trying to navigate how do I upload it and what's a a tar file. So there was there was a little bit of like manually dragging a file from the external hard drive back into the iGUIDE system in order to process. And, and then it felt like both systems are a bit of a black hole. You don't really know how long it's going to take, but I can tell you, Dan, that like um, the one thing that I know is since I've been using Matterport so long, in fact, the processing time has been significantly reduced in recent months. I'd say since uh, almost the beginning of, of COVID last year, uh, they've the processing times has been a, a, basically a non-issue. Um, and so the, the Matterport comes back, but you can't order the floor plan until the Matterport comes back. With the iGUIDE, you, the minute you order your eye guide, you're already selecting, I want this kind of floor plan or that premium floor plan. Like I want standard or premium. So I don't have to then remember to look for an email notifying me that, oh, my model is ready. And so now I can order the floor plan. There's no lag. And in fact, um, the one trick to that is in Matterport, sometimes when you go to process your model, you can already grab the link to what it will be. It's a little bit like a YouTube video that's not quite fully baked, then you can get that link to your Matterport model, even though it's not yet done, and then send it to a third party for processing. And you just say, this will be ready soon. Please check it, you know, and then, uh, and so sometimes I, I've been able to get a little bit of a jump on floor plans that way. Um, but uh, otherwise, I guide is that's a confidence builder right there, just knowing that the floor plan is ordered at the same time as the I guide itself has been created. Now, I guide does have different options on so Matterport I think a black and white outline of the walls includes a Matterport logo I guide I think of multiple colors I think of no no I guide logo and I think of uh, if I if I want the uh, some of the key furniture pieces included I can do that did, yeah. did have you experimented with the different colors or looked at it or is that of importance to you your clients I think it's important to be able to show, yeah, the first one I ordered, I ordered a premium eye guide because I was like, hey, like, let's see, what's the what's the luxury model here, you know? And um, it basically, it'll do exactly what you said. It will create, uh, or they, the drafters, it's not it, but the drafters will um, have a particular level of detail that they include. Um, and so that, um, that level of detail includes things such as appliances um, and, you know, the outlining of, of perhaps uh, spaces and, and delineating that a little bit more, uh, you know, in a more detailed way. Whereas Matterport's uh, schematic right now can only be configured in one of two ways. I mean, you can, you can relabel things yourself before you process it, but uh, you're really just choosing, like, do I want imperial numbers or do I want, um, you know, square foot or not square feet, but uh, metric, you know, uh, meters. And so that's the, that's the difference. I, I have very little um, that I can choose from. Um, but with iGUIDE, I can choose, you know, I think a slightly more premium versus the standard. And you can also choose just a photos only. And I kind of, I went down that rabbit hole once. I was like, what does photos only look like? And then I was like, I don't, why would I use this? So, um, yeah. So for floor plans, like I like it. And I think that um, the interactive floor plan, and again, um, just Matterport, you know, not other parties that offer interactive floor, floor plans from a Matterport or with a skin or other kind of um, service. Uh, you know, it's nice to be able to have an orientation. You and I can read 2D floor plans 
because we've been looking at them for years. Not everybody can jump right into a floor plan and orient themselves. I don't understand. Uh, interactive floor plan. Uh, are you referring to the viewing experience? I'm, yeah, it's sort of like the viewing experience. I mean, with the eye guide, um, when you are on a pano, you're seeing which pano in the map, you know, is, is, you know, where you are in the map is represented by a highlighted um, scan position. And so I consider that to be a more interactive experience because I can then click to that location and, and get to that point um, from the map itself. Um, and in Matterport, um, if I'm in a floor plan view, you know, if I'm viewing the model and I'm in floor plan view, I can go there, but that doesn't stay on my screen, right? That sort of goes away the minute I am jumping into it. And I think it's because it's built in Unity. Um, and so since Matterport is built that way, you're going into the model and you're sort of jumping into a video game. Right. Well, th th this is a big topic, uh, viewing experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and right now we're just kind of focused on uh, maybe the, the Matterport floor plan view and the eye guide floor plan view. So right. versus the floor plans that you would download, for example. Versus the floor plans that, th that you download. <laughs> Excuse me. So uh, on the viewing experience, do you, uh, on a scale of one to 10, how important for eye guide is that? Um, interactive floor plan map that's that's persistent that stays there unless you minimize it i think it's the key feature i think that um besides the detail besides the ability to sort of customize the um the the banner uh, for the realtor or say have the details available for the floor plans i think having an interactive floor plan is what makes it um interesting to a, a user and a viewer because they can precisely get the information they need um, pretty quickly and uh, without having to spin around, jump in, get lost, you know, navigate a 3D model. Um, so that's a plus. You, you like that on plus. iGuide. Yeah. I think it's, I think it shows the utilitarian um, benefit, the, the utilitarian uh, use cases of the iGuide and kind of what makes it so um, so beneficial. It's one of its it's one of its key features. So you always know where you are in an eye guide because you see uh, a highlighted scan point in the online mini map within the tour. Correct. If you were Matterport, would you add that feature? Oh, for sure. It, they 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 don't because an, there's another third party provider that sort of makes that easy. And so, um, but the reason that that is not, not as ideal is because it, it's, you know, it slows down the load time of that model. So, um, you know, it is, or at least it did, I don't know if it does anymore, but um, I would add that. I don't think that that's some sort of proprietary um, feature. I feel like it's just a, a natural evolution of having uh, data. Um. Uh, iGuide does not have a dollhouse view. Uh, is, is that is that a bad thing? Is that an okay thing? Does the the interactive floor plan view uh, take its place, and you're happy with that? I think that the dollhouse is is like love hate because the dollhouse is sort of is great for showing properties that have. Like, say you have a, I had a place I scanned the other day that had a music room, uh, like with soundproofing down in sort of the basement and you had to go down these stairs and it was, you know, definitely below grade underground. And the dollhouse was great for that because it showed me like, how far is that from the main house? Um, it helped a chop a house that was pretty chopped up um, with, a, with a challenging floor plan to understand make more sense. Um, and so that was a benefit to Matterport having that. And I feel like with the um, the eye guide not having it, I feel like, you know, for my commercial real estate clients, Dan, like they, they don't really, the, the dollhouse does not relate to them whatsoever because you're in, you're on a full floor or you're on a par partial floor 
but you don't need a dollhouse. For... Do you have clients that ask you to disable the dollhouse? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Work? Yeah. And we did it recently where they didn't want to pay, for example, to scan all 20,000 square feet. And so we just, um, we just scanned in so that you could see into the main area and around the corner. We just did like maybe 20 sweep spots, 20 scans, and then we disabled the dollhouse. And it was enough of a teaser that it was within my client's budget, but you didn't have a full tour to walk the whole floor, but that didn't matter. So yeah, I think, I think that dollhouse is dollhouse is definitely a, a matter of preference. Okay. And, uh, um, pr pr pricing, this may be a hard, I, I think I want to ask this three different ways. First, um, you have five Matterport cameras over since 2015. You've probably at some point have owned 10, 11. At least, yeah. yeah at 10. least. Probably, let's, say, let's say 10. Yeah, 10 is probably the at number. 10, and you've, you've obviously sold the number of the Pro Ones, et cetera. And so you're at five Matterport Pro 2 3D cameras. Yeah. At some point, you probably paid forty five hundred dollars just starting okay. out for Matterport Pro One. Yeah. Uh, today, a Matterport Pro One, uh, Matterport Pro Two, three D camera is three thousand three hundred ninety five dollars. It tends to be perpetually on sale. I'm not sure I've ever seen a time that a Matterport camera is not on sale. Right. So you can actually today, Thursday, June third, twenty twenty one buy a Matterport Pro camera with a coupon code at $2,995. So call it $3,000. Um, Cause you're obviously buying cameras, you know, over time. So uh, the, 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 uh, I think I have to set the scene here to ask you my questions on the, on the um, iGuide Planix camera kit. Uh, they're presently uh, two thousand one hundred ninety-nine dollars. They happen to have uh, a discount through June thirtieth for two thousand ninety-nine dollars. Okay. And if you don't need the Rico Theta, you can buy it uh, by the iGuide Planix camera kit um, uh, with without the Rico Theta Z1 for one thousand four hundred ninety-nine dollars. And there's a special through June thirtieth for one thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars, so fourteen hundred dollars. Ah. So if, if today you had to buy a Matterport camera at a discounted price of say three thousand dollars, or you had a choice of buying an iGuide Planix camera kit for thirty one hundred dollars, or without the Rico at fourteen hundred dollars, how important is the cost of hardware? for you as you think about replacing Matterport Pro 2 3D cameras of either replacing a camera or buying additional cameras? Um, how important is the price point? Of the hardware. Not important. Um, it's not important because it's a business expense and all of these systems are designed to be like razors and blades, you know? You buy the hardware at a relatively discounted or inexpensive price relative to, you know, go out and try and make one of these yourselves, right? Like you can't, like it's impossible, right? So, um, or maybe you can, Matt Bell did. <laughs> so um, I think- One, one uh, of the three co-founders of Matterport, Matt Bell, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think that, um, I think that, okay, so the price points that you said, so what was we got, we're at 290, $29.95, that's the Matterport. T today, Matterport's uh, discounted at $3,000 and a Rico and a iGuide Planix camera kit, uh, including the Rico Theta Z1 is $2,100 with the discount or $1,400 without a Rico Theta Z1. So you can. Okay, so that's the best deal. If you don't have a Z1 camera and you're worried about the price, the Planix system with the Z1, okay, twenty one hundred, right? Twenty one hundred dollars for a Planix with the Z1 yep. is twenty one hundred dollars because you're otherwise spending about nine hundred bucks for a Z1, and this is the Planix without. I, I'd like to get that price. I'm paying about a thousand dollars right now. So do you have a special on your Rico Theta Z1s? Yeah, you do. If you're a Zillow photographer, if you are a Zillow 
certified photographer, you have a hundred dollars. I think it's a hundred dollars off of a, it used to be something like that. I think you get a hundred dollars off of a, a Z one camera. Okay. Okay. Great. So folks should use that, um, use that to their advantage. So I'm not using without this hundred dollar discount. Okay. So I, my writing's kind of bad because um, I don't do it so well these days, but, um, so let's say it's a thousand bucks. So you're at twenty four ninety nine. You already own the Z one, right? So, but that, but I did it this way. I paid fourteen ninety nine, I think. Yeah. And I, but I didn't get that calibration, which now I'm kind of like, ooh, I think I need that calibration. So, um, but if you added the calibration to the twenty four ninety nine, you'd be over the cost of buying the system with the Z one. Now the Matterport. Twenty nine ninety five. I mean, tell me, Dan, if I'm crazy, but this is not the, these prices are not dissimilar from each other. They're the same. Okay, so I I, I think what I'm hearing there is you're a, a business person. If there is an opportunity to make money, this is just the cost of doing business, and you're still trying to decide whether uh, perhaps new clients should be moved to an eye guide or whether existing clients should be moved to an eye guide or is there different pricing based on which system and so you're still in that trying to figure it out you're not quite sure yet you still want to keep testing uh and learning and asking clients i think yeah like so. i haven't gone ahead and said that here's how i think about it and maybe i don't think about it the same way as somebody who is like just starting out and and i completely get the person who is just starting out because when i first bought my matterport system it was forty five hundred dollars the ipad was another several hundred dollars the, the the whole investment was a lot and i remember feeling like oh my god i don't have a single client who's ever like nobody even nobody googled matterport or 3d tour in 2015. i can tell I you did. that I you did. and i we're like the two people and, and, um, but nobody even looked for it. So the fact that now there's so much demand for it is really a testament to the efforts of so many people and the market catching up to the technology. So we're riding the wave. Whereas before we were like, okay, there's going to be wave. Maybe you're like getting on your surfboard, but it's not here yet now. Um, but I think that, um, but your question is, is like, you know, what do you do? I, my way of looking at it is not, one or the other my way of looking at it is at this point is do i want to have it in addition to is it a way to capture and upsell existing clients with additional revenue or additional ways to to capture more when you're there and and keep this in mind and i think this was a big motivator for me going into the system into the planning system this is my, probably my number one decision uh making um you know like the thing that led me to making this decision this spring was I had been also using, and I, I'm going to bring it up, but Zillow 3D Home Tours had offered a floor plan function. Okay. That was a service that they were offering for um, limited regions. So it was available in my region. And so I was an early adopter of using those floor plans. They were inundated and overwhelmed. And then they, they started having like a 10, 15 day lag I mean, it was like 11 days for one of my clients where the, where the floor plans were not coming back. And I had thought that it was more reliable than that, but it just went crazy. And so, um, I said, I need, a, I need to have an alternative to Matterport. That's not like a cell phone, you know, do it on your iPad kind of deal. I need a professional system. That's going to be something that only a professional would invest in um, to be able to create, uh, accurate floor plans for my clients. And so when that coincided with Zillow, no longer offering the floor plan service for a short period of time, while they retool for me, it was like, I don't want to have just one offer, one offering for floor plans. And so I was like, Hey, I already have the Z one Matterport. Love it. But you know, they, you know, they have not put a lot of energy into supporting their photographers recently. So I was like, you know, there, this is where I need to explore other options. And so that was the thing is that it's it, what will probably happen is that my team 
you know, after I test this for, let's say like six weeks and I get enough feedback, then, then I'll make the decision. Do I deploy two or three more of the, uh, the plan X system so that everybody on the team who already has a Z1 will then also have a Matterport, you know, they'll have the Matterport, they'll have the Z1. I think it's best to have a dedicated Z1 to your plan X system. So, you know, I would probably be looking at this given the prices I would be buying this. The one, the Planix system that comes with the Z1 calibrated. Uh, for clarification, 2100, it is, it, it's not the precision calibration. Okay. Well, whatever that's, the precision That's another $500. Okay. I would get that. I would buy the $2,600. I would buy that in addition to my Matterport Pro 2. Somebody was just starting out. You were starting out in 2015. You invested in a $4,500 camera, an iPad, perhaps yeah. needed, you know, tripod. Got to get a case. By the time you, you got done, it was probably near $10,000. Yeah. Uh, um, what would you tell someone that was just starting out today? That's a really good question. Because, and I, and I brought this out for a reason, because the Z1, right, can also be used with the Matterport system as a standalone device without the Pro 2. So if I were to gonna take the time it takes to then learn how to use both, I would probably get a Z1. If I had a Z1, I could do Matterport, I could do iGUIDE if I had the iGUIDE system and I could do Zillow Tours. So it's not the highest quality, but if, 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 consider, if you're considering the price of the investment, you could get into the whole, you could get into all three with that, what would it be, the 20, and even not, not the highest calibration, you could, at $2,100, you could actually get into all the systems. That's the way I would think about it. So let's, let me ask, let's, let me ask the question this way and, and see if your answer differs. Uh, so Matterport, uh, today, if you get a Matterport cloud account, it's a subscription, uh, it's, it's not per tour. Uh, iGUIDE is per, you pay per tour. There's no subscription. Uh, you, with iGUIDE, you get a year's hosting, though they would tell you they've never charged for hosting beyond that since the company was formed nearly 10 years ago. Yeah. So uh, is iGUIDE, when it comes to processing for you, is iGUIDE, is it, is it a less cost? Is it more cost? What, what, what's better? And, and, and maybe it's not even a fair question. Are, are you on a Matterport Classic pricing account? Are I you on a matter, you have, you have a Matterport Classic pricing, which is prior to 2019, you have Matterport current yeah. cloud pricing. Uh, if we were just focused on the current cloud. You have to just focus on current. Yeah. 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 So is this an apples to oranges comparison or how yeah. do I ask you in terms of pricing? What, yeah, what, I, what are your thoughts of iGUIDE versus Matterport cloud subscription versus paper tour? Well, ask yourself who, who, who is really thinking about having the most spaces generated right now? Like I don't know. It's a, it's a complicated question because like if they want to incentivize you as a, as a person who an operator to go out and just make as many scans as possible, neither one of the companies really seems to say, you know what, there's, there's no, there's like a disincentive at a certain point for you to want to make more on the current plans with Matterport after those 25, there's a disincentive because you're going to have to upgrade to a much higher tier. And so it's, it's like, yeah, I can archive, but I don't think any of the people that work there have ever tried to manage a business where they have to like choose their children, right? They have to choose like, who do I, you know, do I just make another account at 25 or what I've done, Dan, and this is one of those places where you're like, you kind of feel it is like, I've recommended that so many of my clients get their own Matterport port accounts. Now, what we have realized in the last month or two is maybe even longer is that Matterport has just rolled out capture services as a button in the Matterport account. So everybody I sold into, hey, get your own Matterport account so that it's not in my hosting. 
um, and then just invite me as a collaborator. Now they can just order their own Matterport services from somebody else. Tell me that's a sustainable business for a person who is just, you know, um, who has made that investment. And I think so you're starting to see that um, that the incentives are not quite aligned. And now if you, for, for the photographer, and now if you look about the eye guide, I have an upfront cost, but if I have a slow month, I go to, say I go to the Bahamas for the month of December, I don't wanna be in the States. I don't wanna have an extra fee, you know, keeping something hosted. Like I could literally pause the whole thing and I would not incur additional charges. I feel like that supports a small business owner as they are trying to build a business that they may not yet have established. Um, so I would say that is a huge consideration for somebody who's just starting out. And, and you know, yeah, do you want to be a professional? Do you want to have the pro too? You're going to get there. Like you'll get there and you might even want to start there. But like, if you want to be a photographer and have a photography company and that's your goal versus you're a realtor, who just has a con or your property manager who has a constant stream of spaces that need scanning, you'll buy your own camera because you're just going to do it in house, you know, rather than necessarily being a person who's thinking, Hey, I can have this as a side hustle or this could be my business. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm still trying to understand if I'm just starting out today and I'm trying to make a decision between getting a uh, first in terms of picking a platform. Yeah. Do I pick Matterport? Do I pick iGuide? And then once I pick a platform, uh, do I get a Pro 2, Matterport Pro 2 3D camera? Do I get a Ricoh Theta Z1? Do I get an Insta360 One X2 or no. yet some, some other camera? So yeah. I think what I heard was, I'm not sure. If, you don't, if, oh, sorry. Okay. So to be clear, so if I'm just starting out and so you're saying you're, you're starting out as a photographer or you're starting out as like somebody who already has a, a book of business coming to them. I'd be curious about both answers. Okay. If you're a, if you're somebody who has a book of business coming to you right away, right now, um, and depending on the volume of that business, if it's going to stay um, relatively stable, um, and you want to have the highest quality marketing video or marketing content and the ability to really do all of those kind of, um, and you want it to sort of be an easy interface to use. I still think the Matterport is the way to go, right? Cause you have a book of business coming to you. If you are starting out brand new as a photographer and you want to get acquainted with 360 and 3D technology, and you are looking to spend less than $3,000 to start your business, then you can do that with the iGUIDE system without incurring monthly recurring charges, right? And that will give you the ability to do what I think is a very steep learning curve of, of learning the systems but be, you have to be a salesperson. So we didn't even talk about that, Dan, but I don't, I, I, I would almost say that this, the key to success in all of this is not if I have this system or that system. The key to the success is, are you gonna be a, an entrepreneur that can make a business successful? So. so you mentioned getting started for under 3000. Now I could get started with Matterport for under 3000 by getting a Matterport cloud account and buying a Rico Theta Z1. Mm, I guess that's that's true. That that is true. Mm. Right, but you wouldn't be able to do the, you wouldn't be able to do the Planix. You could do Z1, and you could you could do the Zillow, and you could do Matterport, but you couldn't use Planix. You couldn't use iGuide. So you you could do iGuide if you then bought the base unit. Uh, which presently is on sale for fourteen hundred dollars. Yeah, and only pay per tour for iGuide. Yeah, um, you could kind of get floor. I think you can get floor plans if you use a third party. You can get floor plans using just the Z1 and, and Matterport. Yes, but you wouldn't be able to do that with Matterport with the Matterport. Uh, you know, native 
uh, in, you know, so in, in Matterport the workshop, you couldn't just press the button and or order the, the yeah. floor plans. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, gee, yeah, good point, Dan. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that that is less than that is less, but you're going to have to have uh, you're going to be spending $70 a month from now. And I mean, maybe you spend you have need five spaces. That's not a business to have five active spaces. Right. So you well, $69 a month would be 25 active spaces. Yeah, 25 active spaces. So you're still spending $700 a year um, on just keeping that stuff alive. Uh, okay. But if I went and shot iGUIDE, so it, it sounds like we really need to do a spreadsheet and we need really need, in order to answer the question, uh, need to know are you doing, do you need 25 active tours, 50 active tours, 100 active tours? 300 active tours uh, and what kind of clients and can you, in the case of Matterport, deactivate and does that drive you crazy because you're picking between which children to... You think about it this way. Yeah, think about it like you want to, say you're in a, a place that's a destination, like say you're in Florida, right? And you want to go after hospitality clients or you live in Hawaii and guess what? It's all Airbnb and it's all like vacation rentals. Those are clients that want to have spaces active for a long time they're going to pay to bring you in you're going to go do those shoots and then they're going to want to keep those active is matterport going to be a good solution for you i don't think so it's not because then you're going to have to deal with like going after hosting going at, you know that's or you get them your clients to get an account um so it just really depends on who your clients are if you're a realtor and the house transacts like in the bay area like in seven days I can probably take it down and, and my Matterport model could be archived within 60 days. Yes, but I, I also hear, heard your concern, which is probably a, a different show on a different day. Yeah. You're recommending to your clients that they set up a Matterport cloud account so you can publish to their Matterport cloud account only to have Matterport turn around and launch Matterport capture services that enable anyone with a cloud account to press a button and order one on demand, perhaps uh, uh, a competing photographer in the San Francisco Bay Area. For example, like totally possible. In fact, uh, I mean, it's not through capture services with a button, but they, they have done that over the last year already, right? So with enterprise clients. So um, I think that the, um, those are things to really keep in mind. Whereas on iGUIDES, um, portal and or maybe on their on their page you can also find a photographer on the website and if you give your serial number to iGUIDE and you say hey publish me on the map they just publish you on the map like it's not this like oh we're gonna publish it on the map but then we're gonna go and like you know get some enterprise client you know ar arrangement with your with the other people in the area and it will pro it, it'll probably get there but i have yet to see i guide at least publicly complain that they needed to capture like 700 starbucks this month and that they, they couldn't fulfill on that you know what i mean yeah so we've covered a lot of ground i know we've been talking for about an hour and a half oh oh my god <laughs> with, and, and, and and truly i i could probably do another hour and a half with you because <laughs> i i'll never be short of questions to ask you that said, uh, 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 I should wrap it up with at least one open-ended question. Is there anything else that you want to share with us uh, about your experience of iGUIDE Planix Camera Kit versus Matterport Pro 2 3D camera? Yeah, I would say, and I think I've already covered it, but I think that, you know, if you are looking to remain competitive, you know, and you're looking to continue to grow your skills. And as just a provider of services, like, re regardless of what, um, you know, which one your clients are going to love or this, or that, like, if it's something that you're interested in, and you want to learn about, I feel like I've already increased my skills and my knowledge by investing, um, you know, $1,500 into the planning system. And, um, I've already learned new things that get me very excited about, uh, you know, just this, this thing that I do. And I think that that's really important that people like what they do. 
And so I have found that for me, learning a new system this time was like, it was just fun. And so, you know, in the same way that I really enjoyed getting to know Matterport in the beginning, like I, I really like the Matterport system still, but this has been, this has been very, um, it's been really fun to have a hand or, you know, get my hands on something um, that is different, but very similar. And um, I'm actually, I'm just enjoying it. So I hope that other people who are curious about the technology will invest um, their time. And, and like I said, like I even told some of my friends in the Bay Area who are other photographers who are Matterport photographers, it's like, look, you guys, you want to meet up and I'll, I'll let you play with it. Like, I'll go, like, I'd love for you to see what you think. Because I really think that it is um, a game changer for somebody who has only had Matterport to this point um, as sort of their 3D um, or, you know, automatic floor plan generation system. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. I, 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 I hope to learn more about your plans in a few months about whether you decide to offer iGUIDE as a solution. And if so, do you price it at the same as Matterport, more than Matterport, less than Matterport? So I uh, perhaps you can come back on the show. I don't know if it's six months or a year from now, but to talk about this is what you did and why and how yeah. that's working for you. Dan, thank you. I would love to do that. I will definitely let you know. I'm for sure going to start offering it um, and we'll be building the rate card this month. And uh, so those are the questions I'll be asking. Maybe we can, uh, you know, share notes on that matrix of, uh, you know, uh, profitability. But I think that um, I think that uh, certainly there is a subset of clients or a new set of clients who are going to be really well served by the new system and for whom a Matterport uh, hosting account, for example, is just, it's just something that they don't want. And I, and I completely understand. So for those people, we have another solution and I think it, it hits a lot of marks and uh, you know, I'm excited to see what Matterport comes out with in the next year too. You know, uh, there's, there's, uh, there's no crystal ball, but I would imagine that there will be more announcements from Matterport and we can see, Maybe, maybe something else will be on the horizon. We don't know. Terrific. Emily, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you, Dan. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. We've been visiting with Emily Ullman. Emily is the founder and CEO of Hopscotch Interactive. You can find Emily uh, at uh, www.hopscotchinteractive.com in the We Get Around Network forum at Hopscotch. Uh, and uh, actually, I learned that you have a, another title, which which is Scanning Queen. I'm so, Scanning Queen. But but I actually knew that, and that's why we wanted to have you on the show because you you are you actually are a, 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 scan, a Scanning Queen, and that's what we uh, you had so much to share with today. So yeah, Emily for for Emily in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum from Atlanta, and you've been watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. And Emily, I think we need to do a little thumbnail here Thumb, for, for Big up. Smile. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and if you can follow, you can follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and uh, at Hopscotch Interactive, and I can't wait. Thank you. And... <laughs>